because it seems like Molly is really just gutting for it. We gotta get out of here, we've been compromised. I'm telling you, okay? You tried playing Molly in an ultimate race. Hey everybody, I'm Molly. And I'm Melissa. And we are here with Disney World Ultimate Race. We are kicking off our March Madness bracket right now. one loss. I too have one loss. So this is going to be a tough matchup, I think. I I think it'll be a very tough matchup. You are the GOAT. Oh, uh, well, I got snaked once. So you do pretty well, though. You hold your own. You've Thank been you. a lot of good contestants. So I definitely think it's anybody's game this time. I feel like a giant right, right now. All right, it is a big game. We are playing Molly. We have to. Hello, I have to crouch down I to know. get into your I know. <laughs> Hopefully, she'll be crouching down because I will have one later. Three, two, one. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, I get a few minutes to look at this and kind of come up with a strategy. I love Melissa. I know you guys love Melissa, but I really hope you're rooting for me on this one. I'm very nervous right now, but here we go. Okay, looking at the board. Swirl around the claw. That's Toy Story Land. Ooh, tell us your favorite part of Pixar's soul. I love soul. Um, near floating sheets. Show us a sketchy waterfront and tell us three data pad features. Okay, that's GE. Okay, uh, let's see what else is on here. Find salad on three menus. I think that's pretty doable. There's a lot to do, but I think I can do it. So to start off this race, I'm actually standing next to where the Mickey Sorcerer hat used to be. They put it there for the Millennium Celebration. It was only supposed to be around for a couple of years at most. And they ended up keeping it around until 2015 when sadly it came down. But now we can see the Chinese theater. I have a strategy. I have a place to go. The first one I'm gonna try and get is point out hugs and kisses from Minnie Mouse. And now, I don't know if you know this, you probably do. Hugs and kisses are X's and O's. Minnie always signs her name with X's and O's. And where has Minnie signed her name before? The Chinese Theater. They're themed after Grauman's Chinese Theater in actual LA where lots of famous movies have premiered, including Mary Poppins, but just like the real Chinese theater, famous people have left their handprints in the sand. And of course, we're in Disney World. So who's left their handprints? But the Disney characters. So we're going to go find Minnie's. So until recently, this was, of course, the great movie ride. But it's making Minnie's Runaway Railway now. Really, really cute. The first time Mickey and Minnie have had their own attraction in a Disney theater ever and now we got to find miss minnie mouse minnie where are you here's mickey oh there she is minnie mouse x's and o's boom there's one okay i'm gonna head down Sunset Boulevard to take you guys to Belle's former place. And I'm very, very excited about it because it's actually one of my favorite places here at Hollywood Studios. Um, okay, so, oh wait, actually, another square in that same row is to spot the word Hollywood eight times. So let's get that started with one. Hollywood fashions right there. That was easy. Okay, I know we're on Hollywood Boulevard, so where's the street sign? There she is, two. Uh, oh, oh, wait. <laughs> Three. <laughs> Four. <laughs> right there. I'll get closer so you can see. Really? Okay. It's kind of small, but it's there. Right up there. It says Hollywood. Four. Um, okay, let's keep going. There's gotta be Hollywood on, wait, there's gotta be Hollywood on the Hollywood Studios map sign. Right here, six. To keep getting this line across, 
I have to find salad on three menus. And you know I'm gonna talk about my favorite salad in all of Walt Disney World, the famous cob salad from the Hollywood Brown Derby, which is the same recipe as the Brown Derby in actual all Hollywood. Chef went and got whatever he had in the back of the kitchen, chopped it up real fine, and it became the iconic cob salad. So that's one salad. Legends of Hollywood. Seven. One more. Okay. We can do this. I'm keeping my eyes peeled. This music is great. Oh, oh my gosh. What the heck? The Hollywood Tower Hotel on Hollywood Boulevard next to Hollywood Legends of Hollywood. <laughs> All right, I am scooting over now to Hollywood and Vine. This is a character dining meal with Vicky and Minnie and Goofy and uh, Pluto. It's really, really cute because it's a seasonal dine. So they dress up for different holidays. They dress up for Halloween. They dress up for Christmas. Right now they're in their red carpet fabulous affair. I loved this. And if I remember correctly, they've got a delicious salad on the menu. Can I just look at the menu? Thank you. All right, here we go number two salad now when i came i had that farmhouse toss salad it was so good uh, and then i also had the pork asubuco at the recommendation of my server fabulous and then i had the s'mores pie and let me tell you what the food at hollywood and vine prior to the closure when it was a buffet it was good but not great it's fabulous now and this has been my favorite character dining experience since the parks have reopened the characters are great we got i got to see them a bunch of times so if you're looking for a character meal it's modified but it's really fun. So we are currently standing outside of Theater of the Stars, AKA Belle's former place, because this is the home of the Beauty and the Beast stage show, which is my favorite stage show here in Walt Disney World. I think it is so well done. Who doesn't love a dancing clock, okay? It's very well done if you have time and whenever it comes back, hopefully sometime soon. I, don't, I got really sad thinking about the fact that it's not here. <laughs> So in order to check something off of my chart and hopefully get closer to beating Molly, I have to waltz in front of this beautiful theater. Right next door to Hollywood and Vine, we've got the 50s Primetime Cafe. This is a fabulous restaurant where you're transported back to the 50s and you get yelled at by cousins you never knew you had. And look at that. They've got a Caesar salad. Okay, so I know Breedlove doesn't love this restaurant. How did they find my cousin, Dave? Okay, I didn't even know. I did not know I had a cousin, Dave. But I do. Um, so it takes you back into the 50s. Imagine a Leave it to Beaver kitchen. And then you have these hilarious cousins that you've never met. Come serve your table. They're gonna tell you to eat your foods, keep your elbows off the table. Um, if you don't eat all your food, they may make a, an airplane and shove your peas right into your mouth. Uh, maybe not right now, but normally they would. Uh, they also have, this is where you're gonna get your classic comfort foods fried chicken, chicken pot pie, pot roast, meatloaf, amazing milkshakes, including their signature peanut butter and jelly milkshake. Sounds odd, I promise you, it's delicious. So at Sunset Ranch Market, we have Rosie's All-American Cafe, which is actually themed around World War II. This place is famous for their fried green tomato sandwich, but unfortunately that's not on the menu right now. Um, but what is, is Rosie's All-American Salad. I, I am outside of Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular, which is a great show, and it shows you how they do the stunts from Indiana Jones right in front of your eyes. Unfortunately not operating right now while it's limited entertainment offerings, but it's really, really cool. And right outside, there's a really fun Easter egg that is going to get me my next square. Right next to the Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular, there's actually this dig site going on, and there's... You can hear a guy working down there and there's this sign that says warning do not pull rope which leads you to believe it's a forbidden rope but if you look closely you can see that not is crossed out and you can pull that rope sometimes the guy reacts to it 
sometimes he must not notice. I don't need to just pull the rope. In fact, I just did that for fun, apparently, because what I'm actually supposed to do is sing the theme song to Indiana Jones, which I can totally do. Um, actually, if you watch RTT, I tr sang it thinking it was the Star Wars song, but it's actually Indiana Jones. Da -dun -da, dun -dun -da, dun so, da 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 that's actually my alarm clock and it makes you wake up and feel like it's going to be an epic day that you can conquer anything so i highly recommend using the indiana jones theme song oh as your opening as your opening. So I'm, if you look closely, you can see that there are giant keys in the queue of Rock and Roll Coaster, but I really don't want to get in the middle of these people's line. So we're going to stand here and I have to sing Piano Man. Here we go. Sing us a song, you're the Piano Man. Sing us a song tonight. Well, we're all in the mood for a melody and you've got us feeling all right. Right across from the rope that you're not supposed to pull that I definitely did, you've got an, another site of an archeological dig and it just so happens they've dug up a few bones and I have to find a bone. So I did also, you know who else found a bone? You can tell by this iconic hat. So I'm trying to check off the square that says ring a bell and I know that there's a bell in the lobby of the Hollywood Tower Hotel but I'm pretty sure that there is one in the gift shop that I can actually ring. So let's go try to find it. All right, so I'm off to a really good start and I actually have three in a row plus the free space. So I can actually win with one more. Um, and it's to say this is the way near the Mandalorian. Now the Mandalorian, the only one I know of is actually in Doc Ondar's inside Galaxy's Edge. Doc, Ondor, Doc Ondar's is a really cool shop, but it normally has a little bit of a line. And I got snakes by Quincy banking on a line before. So there's a couple clues I think I can get on the way there really quickly, kind of as an insurance policy in case Melissa's already gone that way and she's already working on that one. I wanna make sure that I have some more numbers in case this comes down to a numbers game. <sighs> okay. We are heading into the gift shop now. I love the theming of this gift shop. All right, on the hunt for, oh, I hear some bells. Somebody has hit them. Oh, I think I see them. Okay. So if you come visit the Hollywood Tower Hotel after you survive the Twilight Zone, you can come into the gift shop and Pick up a little bell to remember your trip by if you'd like, but I'm here to ring it. I missed, okay, that was embarrassing. What? There we go. <laughs> I am here outside of Star Tours. This is the second iteration of this attraction. It's now called Star Tours, The Adventures Continue TM. Um, and it's really cool because you have over 50 different sequences that could happen. There's different beginnings, middles, and ends. So when you go on it, you could be greeted by Darth Vader, but then have to talk to Rey and then be attacked and end up on Chewbacca's planet. And you never know what's gonna happen. So it makes the rewrite ability really fun. And they add in new scenes as new movies come out, or they have a Batu scene like in Galaxy's Edge. But actually none of that's important because what is important is that I have to tell you about half a tree. And there it is. So the setting here of Star Tours, you've got your giant AT, AT, you've got your giant trees. I believe we are on the forest mood of Endor, which is where Chewbacca lives. And because this is all supposed to be a movie set, movie producers aren't going to waste money making the backs of trees when they don't need to because you're only going to shoot from the front. So it's half a tree and I have to cha-cha dance next to it. Okay. 
So we are headed out of this area because we have been here for a little while. Um, but I am going to head towards one man's dream because there is a square that says, um, tell us what you think the best Walt Disney World restaurant is while I pose with a trophy. And I do believe that there is an Oscar that Walt Disney himself won at one, one man's dream. I am stumbling over my words once again. <laughs> I'm gonna make a quick diversion down Commissary Lane as I'm headed to Galaxy's Edge um, because I think Melissa's on her way to getting a line. Um, there's some things on Sunset, which is where I believe she is right now. And if she gets all of them, she'll be well on her way to a line and I wanna block her by finding the TV shows first. <laughs> As we were leaving, I happened upon Muscle Beach, and now I need to act like a bodybuilder. Don't they like go like this, or am I making that up? <laughs> am I making that up? Act like you're lifting. Oh, you're right. Maybe I should just like. ABC Commissary. This is a quick service restaurant. They actually, when the park street opened, debuted a brand new menu and it's actually really fabulous. They've got shrimp tacos that are great. Uh, they've got pork tacos, they've got rice bowls, uh, buffalo chicken grilled cheese, yum. And it's very loosely themed after ABC. So they have all these flags and posters outside of different TV shows. So The Chase, that's one. The Good Doctor, that's two. Shark Tank, that's three. Dancing with the Stars, that's four. And Mixed Dish, that's five. Um, of these TV shows, I'm not gonna lie to you, I haven't watched very many of them. Oh, there's more on the back. Oh, <laughs> well now that I've seen the Grey's Anatomy flag, I can tell you that one's my favorite. I am one of the few people that is still watching Grey's Anatomy like 17 years later. It's literally been on for more than half of my life and I've never missed an episode and I acknowledge and accept that it's terrible now. They've killed off all the good characters. There is so much trauma that happens to these people. Like that hospital should get shut down. If there was a shooting and a fire and a flood and a plane crash and everything that else that happens to these people and they still have that hospital open, I'm just saying I wouldn't go there. But I still watch it every week. So that one's my favorite. And before you ask, I was Team Mick Steamy. So we are actually walking under this super cute archway into animation courtyard that says Disney's Hollywood Studios. And if you don't know, Disney's Hollywood Studios used to be called Disney MGM Studios up until 2008 when the licensing agreement with MGM like expired essentially and Disney decided to drop it and just rename it Disney's Hollywood Studios. So the original idea for the park was supposed to be a working film studio. They actually filmed the all new Mickey Mouse Club here with Justin Timberlake and Britney Spears. So. I feel very iconic. So I think I still have a few minutes to try and rack up some more clues before I go get that Doc Ondar's one. And I know exactly which one I'm gonna go to next. We're gonna scoot over to Muppet Vision 3D. Muppet Vision 3D, it's a 3D show with all of the Muppets, as you can expect. You've got Kermit, you've got Miss Piggy, you've got Rizzo, you've got Gonzo, you've got Statler and Waldorf, um, and they are showing off their new technology, 3D. But my favorite character in this whole thing is Sam Eagle for his iconic line, stopping in the middle is distinctly unpatriotic. And then later he's like, Kermit's like, hey Sam, you ready for the fireworks finale? And he's like, yes, it's a glorious three hour finale. You've got a minute and a half. It's so good. It's so funny. The Muppets are hilarious. And if they ever take this down, I will fight. But for now, we're gonna go in and show you one of my favorite little Easter eggs that's in the queue. The clue says to find the spare key. So as you head into Muppet Vision, 
First of all, there are so many jokes. Like this one, you must be shorter than this to enter. That's hilarious. But the one we're looking for is right here at security. There's this little sign that says, back in five minutes, key is under the mat. And you know you want to check because it really is under there. We are heading in to one man's dream to try and find a trophy. Although I'm pretty sure it's in here. <laughs> Hi, thank you. Ooh. Imagine literally be super, uh, imagine literally being surrounded by Walt Disney. I currently am. <laughs> Walking down Grand Avenue now. I always like looking at the details. Maybe this will help me with one of the clues I'm not sure of because they always have fun stuff in the windows and it reminds me of the streets of America and when the Osborne lights was here. Now, of course, most of the streets of America is Galaxy's Edge, but I miss those Osborne lights and I'm sure I'm not the only one. So we've got music, sheet music. Wait. Okay, I'm supposed to tell you my favorite part of Seoul near floating sheets. And considering Pixar is all about music and I'm looking at floating sheet music, I assume that this counts. So now I will tell you that my favorite part of Seoul, now I thought there was a lot of phenomenal talent in Seoul. I loved that David Diggs from Hamilton got to be in the movie. I loved um, Queen Angela Bassett was a main character. Obviously Jamie Foxx and Tina Fey slayed it, but the thing that made me laugh the most was when they were in the like Seoul sphere or whatever it's called, and all of the counselors were named Jerry and Terry and they kept calling each other Jerry, 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 and they all got confused, and then Terry's like the mean one. And I liked at the end when they decided to let Joe have another chance, he's like, what about Terry? And they're like, don't worry, we took care of it. Terry, what's that over there? And then they just like moved one on the abacus. That was my favorite part. I liked the whole movie though, but that part, at least comedically, was the best. <laughs> So if you've never been in here, there is just a lot of information about Walt Disney, the Disney journey, and there's memorabilia from the Disney archives in here, like Walt Disney's desk. I don't know, nothing about this chair looks comfortable. <laughs> I made it into Galaxy's Edge, and I am pretty sure Melissa's still on Sunset, so I'm just snacking up a couple on my way to Doc Ondar's, and one of them says, show us a sketchy water fountain and tell us three data pad features. And there's no water fountain as sketchy as this one, because there's a creature that lives in there. There's a Dianoga. He lives right in there. Maybe we'll see him. Here he comes, here he comes. Sketchy, right? So as, as we were on the hunt for the trophy, I came across some concept art for Peter Pan and I need to knock out the square that says row to Peter Whoa. I need to knock out the square that says crow to Peter Pan. So here we go. Um, I'm going to give it my best shot. I'm really nervous. I don't know why. Okay. <laughs> okay. Near a sketchy water fountain. That's a pretty sketchy water fountain. You have, I have to tell you three features of the Galaxy's Edge data pad. Well, first of all, I'll tell you what it is. Uh, the data pad is a special part of the Play Disney Parks app that you can download and you can use here in Galaxy's Edge. And it's really, really fun because you can play along and interact with things throughout the land. Now, one of the first features is that you get to choose if you want to be part of the first order, if you want to be part of the resistance, or if you want to be a smuggler 
like Han Solo. And that's the one I like to do because I like to look out for number one. And as you are doing this, you're going to get messages and you're going to get all kinds of interactions and communications with other people throughout the land. Maybe Hondo will ask you if you'll do a favor for him. Maybe he'll ask you to go look for something and count something and you get to really interact with the land, scan things. Here's fact number two. You can use it in the queues at the attractions and it's really cool because it helps pass the time in line at both Smuggler's Run and Rise of the Resistance. And I really like it on Rise of the Resistance because Finn himself was actually messaging me and telling me that he was trapped aboard a Star Destroyer and he needed my help and he was looking for armor and all these things and you're talking to Finn and then when you actually get on the attraction and Finn's there in armor, you're like, OMG, I totally helped with that. And fact number three, you can actually hack into all of these databases around the, uh, around the land. You can actually use your phone to hack them and it'll make you connect dots and do different wires and stuff on your screen and if you do it correctly, they'll react. You can also do that with things like the droids outside of Droid Depot. So it's a really cool way, if you're an annual pass holder, if you're a diehard Star Wars fan, it takes up the immersion into this land a lot. And it's something not a lot of people know about or do. So I definitely recommend it. So literally right next to the concept art is the trophy. This is an Oscar statue that Walt Disney won. So the Walt Disney Studios actually won this Oscar for 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. And we're gonna get real nice and close so I can tell you my favorite restaurant, drum roll. Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so my favorite restaurant in Walt Disney World, or the restaurant that I think is the best in Walt Disney World is Paddlefish at Disney Springs. I really like seafood and I love the views there. Some of the stormtroopers are here. Hey, do these count as monsters? I'm being told that stormtroopers do not count as monsters, so I do, in fact, need to hope to see Mike or Sully. Here's the thing, though. They are monsters because they murder innocent men and women and children. Would you call that anything but a monster? No worries, I'm with the First Order. No, oh, no. Good work. Good. Yep, big fan of your work. Okay, we gotta go. We gotta get out of here, we've been compromised. So I just realized that Molly only has one left in her row, and it's a Mandalorian. It's say, this is the way near the Mandalorian, and we just passed a Mandalorian poster here in Animation Courtyard, so I'm like running to try to find it before Molly wins. All right, we are outside Doc Ondar's, and for the first time in a very long time, it doesn't have a line. Doc Ondar's is such a cool store, and even if you don't plan on buying anything, Star Wars fans, you gotta go in here because they have all kinds of really cool collectibles. They have recreations of jewelry from the film. This is where you can get those Kyber crystals. You can get specialty lightsabers. But I am pretty, pretty sure the helmet from the Mandalorian's in there, so we gotta go. Oh, I see it right under Star Wars launch bay. <sighs> okay, hopefully my little legs can get me there fast. Finding the Mandalorian's helmet. Hey, hey Doc. Doc. Do you have the Mandalorian's helmet in here? You know, the Mandalorian, Disney Plus. Oh, you do have it in here, okay. Thank you for that advice, Doc. Oh, and I, hello, I see you keep it right above you. There's the Mandalorian's helmet. This is the way. Where's Baby Yoda? <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm RJ, and wow, what a game! Molly, you killed round one. I can't say that we're surprised though. However, comma, Melissa, you gave her a run for her money. 
We've got both players here today. Let's start the interview and talk about their views on the matchup. Hey, Melissa, thanks for being here. So sorry about your loss. I'm a little sad, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but I had a great time. Hollywood Studios is definitely fun and Molly is quite the competitor. What do you think your biggest mistake was? Where did you go wrong? My biggest mistake was not grabbing the Mandalorian pastor when I walked by it the first time. Thanks for chatting with us. Better luck on your next race. Hey Molly, congratulations on your epic win today. Where did it get a little dicey? Luckily, it didn't end up being a mistake, but definitely the biggest risk I took was diverting on my way to Galaxy's Edge. Um, that's the one I needed to win, but I was just afraid that Melissa would be going for that one somewhere else, and then I would have been out of luck. So it was a, it was a risk to divert and grab a few on the way here, but luckily it paid off today. Thanks for chatting with us. We'll be rooting for you in the semifinals. As always, guys, I'm RJ, and I'll see you next time on Disney World Ultimate Challenge, 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 March Madness. Where is my, oh, thank you. Crystal Geyser, no Evian, and it's half drink drunken. Drinking? Drink? <laughs> well, that's a wrap on this round one game in the bracket. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but at least I can sit at home and watch you guys do round two comfortably. Yeah, you don't have any more stress. I now have to be stressed about None playing in the all. next round. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm but, sure you'll do great though. You did a great job this time. So did you. You were ping ponging all over Hollywood. I was Thank impressed. you. I was rushing. My little legs were carrying. I was me. impressed. Maybe, yeah, I only won because I'm taller, I'm pretty sure. I'll, I'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just kicked off our March Madness bracket. We've got a bunch more rounds to go. Definitely let us know who you're rooting for in the comments. Let us know which other places you want to see these races. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media at All Ears Net. And until next time, y'all, I'm Molly. And I'm Melissa. Thanks for watching. Bye. Hey, everybody, it's Molly. Thanks for tuning in to game one of our Disney World Ultimate Challenge March Madness Bracket. Be sure to tune in over the next few weeks as we continue to battle it out for ultimate bragging rights. And if you'd like to play along, we've got the boards for you. Just go to allears.net slash scavenger dash hunt, sign up for our free newsletter, and all the scavenger hunt boards are coming straight to your inbox. Make sure to like and subscribe and ring that notification bell so you know when new episodes come out. And click over here for a playlist where all of the March Madness episodes will be. If you want more All Ears, click over here for another Disney World Ultimate race of Quincy and I battling out in Hollywood Studios. Thanks for watching!